Good morning. There we go. That looks a bit better. Uh, you are Matonia. And it's Friday, and it's the end of the week. It is the end of the month, and exciting times. <laughs> cool stuff. So we had the event uh, last night. Uh, I went with my wife. It was fantastic. And on the way there, I was talking to her about uh, the video I, was, I did yesterday. And I said, I just figured out what the next one is going to be. And um, this is from experience. Over a million leads generated show me this. And um, I thought I need to share this. And, 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 and the reason I want to share this is because it's made huge differences. It made big impact in a lot of our clients' businesses. Uh, because nobody has, has, has sat them down and actually explained this. So what am I talking about? Okay, here's the thing. So in business, you, you, you get different functions. You've got your admin, you've got operations, and typically you've got marketing and sales. So those are the three key ones. Uh, your administration is where you do your accounting and your book work and you know, submitting all the stuff. Uh, your operations is the working of the business. You know, it's where you that. Things happen that you make. The widgets get made, the service gets delivered, and then your marketing and sales side is where you find clients and get them into a process, and you know you get clients. Cool. Uh, no business can survive without that marketing and sales process working. But here's the thing: um, if 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 your sales process is not working, no matter the amount of marketing that we do it will still fail because your sales process is not working. Let me give you an example. Um, this one client was doing lead generation stuff and he put his secretary on the job to say, cool, you're going to do this, right? And she's an amazing secretary, but she's not in the sales world. So a secretary is all about being effective and, and using her time properly and doing those types of things, right? Um, so what happened was the leads came in, she bundled them up. So let's say on a Thursday, she said, cool, it's Thursday. I'm going to send everybody a quote out and that's it. Didn't work. The sales were not there because it's an ineffective sales process. A better sales process is when the lead comes in, you contact them as quick as possible. Stats show that every if you contact the lead in five minutes, the chances of you, of you closing the deal just goes up so much better. I know it's, it's, it's so much better, your chances of closing that deal. Um, but the moment your sales process is not working, you've got a big, big, big challenge. Uh, because if we start pushing volume into a broken sales process, that volume doesn't fix it. What it does is it just highlights that you've got a big pain with your sales process. So another client, um, well, let's talk about this first one. Uh, so they decide now that lead gen is not for them, they moved it along. Another company took it up, they started making sales. Why? Because as, as the leads came in, this person contacted them as fast as what they possibly could. And then they started making sales. And it's also not a technical thing that they sent. They, they were humans. They, were, they humanized the whole thing. So when I talk to people uh, on a human basis, it was not all of this technical jargon. And then their campaign worked fantastically well. Another client, uh, we've been doing awesome stuff for him for, holy smokes, 12, 18 months. <laughs> it's been 18 months, yes. Okay, so when we started, his cost per lead was about 300. We got that down now to um, some of the campaigns are running at 7 rand, 10 rand a lead. <laughs> Most expensive one is 70 rand a lead. That's a third of what he used to pay. Cool. And if you month we sit and we go through these statistics and we check it out and the reports just went out this morning i checked these already anyway so he's up again it's fantastic stuff but when we sat we said okay cool you know um this game is like golf and if you look at golf you've got your driver you've got uh we we get onto the green you maybe need to do you know on, on a fair way you need to get onto the green and when you're on the green you need to putt right and most people when they go practice golf what do they do they Back out that big driver because that's the fun stick, you know. It's like, ah. anyway, where you actually need to start is your putting. 
because the moment you get your putting better, your whole game improves, your score improves. Most people struggle with their putting, but they put the least effort into it. In business, it's exactly the same thing. Most people spend some time on their marketing, but the least effort on their sales. The clients that, that, that does very well with us, we help them to identify where the gaps are in their sales processes. You start closing that gap and gee, everything starts doing better. So when I say improve your sales process, it could mean different things, depending on the type of business that you've got and your sales process. For some companies, it's just a, it's a sales page, right? So that's their sales process. It's one single page. Wonderful. For some companies, it might be a, a whole team of guys going out to meeting clients, right? For another guy, it might be people on the telephone. In 2006, and to give you an idea of when I talk about these things, 2006, I created the techniques of uh, telephone selling. It's a, it's a course, dynamic telemarketing that we created. I think if level five, the whole cartoon, right? So we created this. Why? Look at that thick thing. <laughs> to develop skills. If you, if, if you develop your sales skills, all your marketing starts, starts working so much better. But most people don't do this. We work with another client. In the morning, and remember, sales is not a one-time thing. It's a consistent thing. You need to consistently work at this. It's like marketing. Marketing is not a one-time thing. It is the thing that you need to focus on. Sales and marketing is a daily thing. Um, so this one client also, um, before I forget this, uh, in the mornings, motivational music pumping, bah, 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 going, getting people psyched up, doing the training, doing the courses, getting the words, doing all of those things to upskill and get the people right for the day. Sales is tough. I think it's one of the hardest jobs in the world because um, you get knocked down more than in any other profession. I remember we've had deals of million, two million, fall down, gah, gah, and you need to get up and you need to take it forward again. So you need to consistently keep on developing your skills. Things like this dude, Tom Hopkins, you know, the official guide to success. Read these things. I've got his sales book as well. Brian Tracy, there's a whole bunch of these guys. Watch, watch these things. Get the information and improve that sales process part. If you improve your sales process part, everything works better. Uh, we're going to do a digital marketing seminar where I talk a little bit more about not just your sales process, but your marketing, your sales process, and the whole thing that's that surrounds this thing. Most people think, ah, oh, I need to just do social media. No! I get excited. <laughs> it's not just social media. How about these guys? Anthony Robbins, Unlimited Power. Read these things, get the ideas. How about this? Now, this is another one. It's good to great. I might have seen it on the bookshelf. Anyway, so what this... What they talk about, I think the second thing is you need to find and identify the right person onto the right seat. So sometimes in, in, in I was looking for this book, sometimes we've got the wrong salesperson in the wrong seat. But uh, the book I was looking for, I, I borrowed it to somebody and I was gone. Oh, horrible. Uh, it was from Blaise Zinger. It's called Top Sales Dogs. And I identified a couple of sales types of people that you need to put into certain positions, right? So... Uh, Chihuahua was the one, uh, and then there's a pit bull. A pit bull is the one that kicks open doors and takes no prisoners. Is that yeah? Is that dude? That's that's a pit bull. That's a typical salesperson we think, but that's not the only one. You've got like a, a Chihuahua that might be very technical orientated. You need to find the right person, put them in the right chair. Don't put the Chihuahua on cold calling. They're not going to like it. They're going to fail. And you might think this person is the wrong person. For It's just that person's in the wrong chair. And I need to identify these, these tools and stuff that you can use to be able to do this. Um, so in, in a couple of weeks, week, two weeks, three weeks, I don't know, a couple of uh, days time, we've got a digital marketing seminar. I'll put a link here somewhere. Uh, would love for you to join me. We're going to talk about to your marketing stuff. I'm going to talk about some of these sales things, give you some ideas. Um, I want to leave you with, with, with this one. If, if you get a thousand people visiting your site in a month and you're lucky enough to get a 10% conversion, which basically means that you get a hundred people putting up their hands and saying, yeah, I'm interested in what you've got. Cool. So now I've got a hundred leads. Then we say your sales process performs at 2%. Okay. 
uh, basically what that means is out of the 100 leads, you're going to close two of the, of, of the leads that basically came in. Cool. Now, the money that you invested to get those 100 leads is, let's call it, let's make it easy, let's make it 1,000 rand, right? So that 1,000 rand basically means that for every lead, you pay 10 rand, okay? So that's your cost per lead. Your cost per sale, because it's two, is 500 rand. So it's 1,000 divided by the two is 500 rand. So it costs you 500 rand to do one sale. So how do we double, triple business turnover? We don't get more traffic, no. We go to the source of the sales process and we see what can we do there to improve that piece over there. So if we were closing at 2%, what would happen if we start closing at 3%, 4%? If you close at 4%, if you improve that sales process to 4%, okay, and it's possible, it's not impossible, to 4%, basically means you're doubling your business turnover because suddenly you're not just doing two deals, you're doing four deals. The input cost is exactly the same. You're still getting those 100 leads, but the output, the sales you're getting is now four instead of two. What if what, what would happen if you improve that to 10%? And it's possible. There's things that you could do to improve your sales from, from a two to a four to a 10%. What would happen if that increases to a 10%? You just X5 your business. Most people get so hung up with traffic and social, all of that stuff. Stuff, that stuff is there. But start with your sales process, whatever that sales process is. Fix that thing. Get that thing working. Because if we start doing marketing, everything works so much better. Fix that thing. Find out why is that thing not working. Get the books. You now get the books. Read, read daily. Yes, 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 something else. Personal effectiveness is on a CD, subliminal type of stuff. Yes, successful sales. Get this stuff, invest in your people, invest in your sales process, invest to get that thing right. To get that better, your marketing automatically starts improving it as well. And the other trick is, listen to what your sales process is telling you. Get that feedback and do a loop and feedback it back into your marketing. If there's certain words people use, if there's certain phrases, if there's certain pain points, bring it back in, into your marketing. Go out there, look at your processes and make it awesome. This is your Amton today. Keep on marketing. Cheers.